Since the dawn of time, the armies of heaven and hell have waged an endless war. Drawn to the conflict was the Charred Council, an entity bound by ancient laws to preserve order and balance. It held that any great power, unchecked, threatened the very fabric of the universe. In time, heaven and hell came to honor the Council and its laws, for none were beyond the swift and terrible justice of the Council's enforcers. A fearsome brotherhood known as the Four Horsemen. Amid the turmoil, the first humans emerged. The Council foretold that these weak but cunning creatures would someday be integral to the balance. Thus, a third kingdom was named. The Kingdom of Man. By order of the Council, a truce was forged between Heaven and Hell. The Great Pact was bound by seven seals to be broken at the appointed time, when man's kingdom stood ready for the end war. A battle that would bring balance and determine the ultimate fate of the three kingdoms. Ah, uh, Dark Seder's Dark Seder's Dark Seder. What can I say about this game, man? I was a fucking builder. This is a War Master edition we're playing the day on the series X. Oh, Xbox of. Oh. Right, right, right. Let's get into the meat and totties of this game. Let's get wired right into it. What is Darksiders War Master edition? Well, it's an updated version of Darksiders, of course. Released for the Xbox One and PS4. And probably. PC. I think it's also available on Switch. Although I don't know what the remaster on the Switch will be like. It's quite nice on the Xbox. Uh, it's the Xbox One X Enhanced Edition I'm playing. So it's about as good as it can get from now. And uh, yeah, it runs really well. It's a really, really nice upgrade. It's a very, 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 very pleasant game to play. I will say that I think the combat's maybe a wee bit too simplistic in places, but you can buy combos from Vulgarum. Vulgarum being a prick of a demon, and just about every character in this game is a prick. Or a fud. Or a fanny. And I think the main character you go, who's War, one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, has got a personality like a toothbrush. He's very stoic and like this all the time, and he just kinda talks like that, and a big run on monotone. But I like him, but he is a bit of a. A bit of a dull chap, but then again, if you were locked up for a hundred year and then sent back to clean up a mess that wasn't yours, but was getting blamed on you, I don't think I'd be too impressed either. Mark Hamill's also in this as not Joker. Now, I've noticed just about Mark Hamill's performances in these sort of roles that uh, he just plays the Joker. He is a floaty wee bastard in this, and he is just a Joker in this. Same goes for Masters of the Universe. When they get him to do the voice of Skeletor, didn't sound anything like Skeletor, he sounded like the fucking Joker. Right, so the game starts off with Heaven and Hell having a wee scrap and it appears like a meteor strike on Earth and they just wreck the place and eat everybody. It's great, then War shows up and starts kicking fuck out everybody. But like, what are you doing here, you prick? You're like, well, you two are fighting and I'm here to stop you fighting, so... Surprise! But where's the rest of you? I don't fucking know, I had a sleep in. Maybe they'd be getting pissed for a while, no? I'm fucking bob -eyed. So where's my brothers? You mean your two brothers and your sister? Cause Fury's a woman and always has been, so she's not your brother, is she, you fucking dick? Maybe just means brothers like in camaraderie terms. I don't fucking know. Maybe I'm just taking it a little bit too literally. Who knows? And then again, who cares? I do for some reason. Aye, so all goes tits up and it gets brought up before this charred council, which are three headstones that talk. Wonderful. And I look, you did, you prick. You fucking, you, you've, you've disrupted the balance. All the humans are now fucked. You look, I don't know how that's. Don't know why that's a thing. Who wrote that into the rule book? You. That's who you bunch of headstone pricks. Kind of remind me of the rock monsters for Return to Oz. Remember that movie? Return to Oz, the extremely upsetting and disturbing sequel to Wizard of Oz, where the electroshock Dorothy into a fucking nightmare. Aye, aye. 
very dark times at Disney, that's very, very dark times. They had to top it somehow, had to distract the audience. Anyway, back to the game, back to the chibbing of the demons as War. Or, uh, uh, you'll notice that War in this playthrough has got a different set of armour on, that's because I found the Abyssal armour pieces during my last playthrough and I'm wearing it just now. So, if you want to know where the Abyssal armour pieces are, go ask somebody else, because I can't remember. That was fucking about a year ago I did this, right? So. You'll just need to go on uh, YouTube fucking like me. That's what I did to find it. A couple of them are really awkward bastards. To find. <coughs> then after a wee while of chipping and chopping and smashing and grabbing and stabbing and spilling all the demon blood that you can, you'll come across a demon called Samael. He's like fucking hell, man. Now this guy just reminds me of Darkness from uh, Legend. Remember that movie with Tim Curry and Tom Cruise? You dis Gust me. You're nothing but an animal. <laughs> we are all animals, my lady. Most are too afraid to see it. Damn you! We are all of us damned, my queen. <clears throat> Tom Cruise with his straight hair and his curly teeth. Then yet Tim Curry stealing the show. Even though he's not in it for all of it, his voice is in it at the beginning. A wee bit during it, and then you get to see his big final demon form at the end, and it's fucking sick. Mm. Sorry, I was daydreaming there. And um, I think he's probably one of the more interesting characters in the whole thing. And he will set about you a task to collect four demon hearts. Then you go and collect the four demon hearts, and he buggers off. He's like, Right, cheers, mate, see ya. Wait for a pint down the local. Couldn't you do that in this fucking shithole? Wall's like, aye, aye, cheers mate, fucking, I'm gonna go kill this destroyer prick. Who's grabbed this archangel called Abaddon, you know, like, Abba, or Abaddon, as some twats would like to say. Abaddon? <laughs> Fuck off, it's Abaddon, ya dicks. They even say Abaddon in this game, they don't say Abaddon, or Abaddon, or a fucking shitein, or a jo jobby. Anyway, we're getting distracted here, but jobby. Such like mispronunciations of fairly easy to pronounce things. But what I like to call Abaddon is greeting face because he's a greeting face cunt, so uh, there you go. And you'll have to tackle his subordinate Uriel throughout the game. Uh, not bad boss fights actually. And that's a nice wee segue into the boss fights because I actually think they're pretty good in this game, believe it or not. Not the biggest fan of traditional boss fights in games, but these are good fun. You get to smack around these giant demons and then mutilate them. Rip out their hearts and feed it to another fucking demon. It's good. I mean, that is a good time. If I, that's a Saturday night to remember, okay? And you get some very interesting and varied locales. There's even a Panzer Dragoon moment in this game. I was like, fucking hell. I just wish there was a wee bit more variety throughout the rest of the game. You do get guns, like angel guns and demon guns. So it's not as if you're just swinging about this big sword all the time, you do get to shoot things if you want, you don't have to though. There are also secret boss fights, but I'll let you see if you can find those. The game also has a sort of Zelda feel to it, there's a bit of backtracking, you could say Metroidvania as well. This is actually a better Castlevania game than the Lords of Shadow games, that's uh, it's quite a damning indictment of those titles, but... If you really want to have a sort of what a modern day Castlevania might actually feel like, buy these instead. You've also got all manner of wee gadgets and toys to play with other than your sword. You've got a scythe, a gun, a big horn thing to wake up these big stone door thingy things. You've got a gauntlet called the Tremor Gauntlet that can be used to break all the ice things you see around you all the time. It's pretty interesting actually and I like the way you actually get the weapons, they're like these big three-faced stone monuments that are chained and you need to knock fuck at them to release release thine divine energy and pass on thine divine knowledge to thee or something like that, right? A lot of different uh, enemy varieties too, you'll get a lot of reskins though which is a bit of a downer but so you get demonic human zombie things, you'll get demons You'll get big demons, you'll get even bigger than big demons, like the biggest of the big, 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 big. You'll fight angels, you'll fight fallen angels, you'll fight these wee fire lizards, you'll fight giant bats, you'll fight giant fire bats. You will fight all manner 
of Shizel. Oh yes, don't forget the skeletons and the big snake-like beings and the things that shoot acid. Pain in the arse then. They look like something out of Resident Evil, these bastards. And most demons will have like one or two death animations you can do if you'll not fuck at them enough and a big bee will appear above their head and you just hit the B button and let that animation swirl away and kill those motherfuckers dead. Now I said most demons not all, okay? Mm-hmm. Good. Unfortunately some of the quests are kinda paddy. There's like a particular one where you go up to this big rock thing and it's like, oh I've been cursed mate and there's these four portals that'll lead you to the things that can break the curse and they're just like challenges. They they really should just have been optional side stuff. And they make you do it twice, and it's just, no. Or you need to juggle the enemies in there to kill them, or you'll need to use like a fucking perfect block parry to kill them, or kill them within a, a lot of time limit, or, or protect six of these skeletons. It's just, no, it's just, it slows the pace of the game right down. It stops you in your tracks. They're no all that fun. And I just think they, they could have been optional side shit. It's a challenge. Fuck off, the crap. But luckily, as I say, there's only two and they are fairly short-lived, but it's still a bugbear. And then you'll meet a race of people, well, I say a race of people, you'll meet one person called a maker, and he's Scottish because of course he is. And he's grumpy because of course he is, because everybody in this game is, like I say, a grump, or a fanny, or a prick. Do you remember in a previous video, if you watched all my previous stuff recently, that I said there was a lot of beauty in destruction? This game's a good example of that. The locales are amazing. I love the look of the game. I love the feel of it. I just, it's just, it's raw and it's all wrecked. And I, that gets my plums pumping. I'm not gonna lie to you. So I, I think I've played this game about maybe a dozen times now. So that doesn't tell you, and I don't really know what will. I do recommend it. I recommend it if you're a fan of Castlevania, Zelda, any of those sort of action adventure games that I've got mild backtracking. Go and get it, enjoy it, and then you've got another two that I'll review as well. Actually another three. Forgot I keep forgetting about uh, Dark Siders Genesis. As do a lot of folk I think, but that could be wrong. It could just be me being a twat. Well, uh, as always guys, I want to thank you for coming along in my TED talk on this game. <laughs> and I'll see you all in the
his holy temple. Earthly thoughts, be silent now. Go to his holy temple. Hey, folks. I was watching Poltergeist 2 with my son last night, and I just thought I'd do that for a wee scary laugh, you know? <laughs> the cauldron was cold, but the horseman rekindled its fire, and in the hearts of the makers, an ember of hope was born. Hope for life, and for what lies beneath the earth. So tonight we're going to talk about, what is it we're going to talk about again? Oh, Darksiders Part 2 or 2 Definitive Edition Oh, see these pun fucking names, these pantastic names They're just, they're bollocks, aren't they? They're really shite But we're going to look at it because it's my favourite Darksiders And I wanted to look at all the Darksiders games I own anyway So here we are, and this is what we're going to do So in this one, you go death you go a different horseman with different skills and different abilities, obviously. But this game takes part at the same time as the first one, or at the same time where Wars in prison for a hundred year, and these brothers are trying to, you know, trying to fucking free him. They're like, fucking hell, Wars been captured by these stone heated bricks. So we better do something about it. We better not look like we're just, you know, slipping on the job. Because something is not fucking right here. Something is a miss. Or maybe it's a mister. Haha, <laughs> we joke there for you, we like hard to joke. As we traverse through the depths of the nether worlds beyond, you know, or what I would think Tom McFarlane might. Tom McFarlane? Who the fuck is Tom McFarlane? You mean Todd McFarlane. And I only think they're based off his work. He don't think he actually fucking drew any of this, but it looks like he would draw it, right? I, I if Spawn showed up, I wouldn't think he'd be look out of place in this world, okay? And this time you're not just stuck on Earth. In fact, you only go to Earth very briefly for one mission in this game. You start off the game looking for some walloper called the Crowfather. Guess why he's called that? Aye, because he likes his pigeons. Always voices. Torment without end. Keeper of secrets, I need your help. I helped you once before, horseman. Look at me now. How I curse that day. How I curse you. Careful, Crowfather. I'm not here to put you out of your misery. Not yet. I know why you've come. Your brother, the one called War. He's been imprisoned by the Child Council and awaits their judgment. For dooming the Earth. For mankind's extinction. Why should I care about your brother's fate? Because you know the truth, your secrets can save him. <laughs> the Council will condemn war. Strip him of power, let him rot in oblivion. To hide the truth. My secrets cannot prove his innocence, horsemen. No, but they can help me to erase the crime. Then you leather him after he takes the form of your brother, and then you get all these Nephilim shards shoved in your chest. Because when you kill the crow father, these amulet shatters and you got all these souls swirling about your chest. It's kind of weird, but go with it, right? It's just go with the flow, baby, okay? Fuck's sake. Then after that, you get flung into the Maker's world. Remember that big walloper Ulfin for the first game? I will. You get to go see his family, essentially. Then there's the, one of them's called Thane. They're all Scottish. Some of them have got dodgy Scottish accents. A couple of them don't even fucking talk. The old Heed Horn shows uh, voiced by James Cosmos, that's pretty cool. At least he is actually Scottish. Be still, horseman. You are wounded. Don't touch me. Your arrival here is a bad omen. Yes, it troubles me greatly. Old one, there's more trouble ahead if you don't start making sense. Where is the Tree of Life? Life. <laughs> this world is dying, lad. Choking on chaos and corruption. We can do little to stop it. Soon, the great tree too shall perish, and with it, the last of my people. Is that not what brought you here, Pale Rider? I seek the tree. Your chaos and corruption don't concern me.
At least thank you, James Cosmo. Sounds like him. If it's no him, then hats off to you. You sound identical, but no, I'm pretty fucking sure it is him. Okay, aye. Let's move on. We'll talk about what's different between the first unit and the second unit. Well, other than the actual locales and the character, this game is more of an RPG looter. You will get so many weapons and armour pieces flung at you that you won't know what to do with half of them. I think I spent half the time, or thought, fucking hell, maybe even more than that, in the actual menus going, ah, well, that's a good fucking, that's a good set, that's a nice piece of scythe. That's a nice thing, you get different weapon types. You'll get your scythes, you'll get hammers, and then you'll get these bastard weapons like glaives and whatnot, and fucking gauntlets and chibbles, and there's, there's a lot of variety in here. It's like Borderlands. There's probably a million different versions of each weapon and you'll find like boss battles and then some of the boss battles will give you special weaponry some of them you can't use yet but usually you level up quite quickly you know you'll be able to put points into what's known as a, a, a teleport slash so it'll fucking freeze people, it'll burn them, it'll steal health, it'll steal wrath so you can do your, your, your big special moves and summon death's true form and leather all these wee pricks and it's quite involved, and if you don't want to get in the teleport slash, you can be a necromancer, right? And you'll like fucking summon the dead, and they'll attack things for you and distract them. A lot of strategy to be used in this game. A lot. I don't know how many times you can level up, so I don't know if it's possible to just to, you know, get as many points as I can just fucking pump points in Everton and unlock Everton. I don't think that's actually possible. It might be, but I, I never really played the game past the point of finishing it, so I don't know. There's hunters and hunters of boss fights as well, and there's loads of different things to use. You'll eventually get what's known as a maker key, and it'll let you unlock the constructs the makers have made, so you can, you know, batter fuck at even more demons of the denizens of the desperate hells of something. And there's this something called darkness, and it's like it's like crude oil, and it's infecting things, and it's taking out all these wee constructs they've made. So you have to fight the Everton, basically, you have to fight fucking everything. And there's flying things, and you get a gun, and a lot of deaths like that fucking. This is Strife's gun, where'd you get this, you bastard? And then she's like, I don't know, I just found it in the garden one day when I was fucking cutting up some toties. Who cares? You take it and use it. Because I've got any fucking use for it, because it's too small for my own. Any giant test fantasies will be plenty to be fucking fulfilled in this game with her. This is like the first maker you talk to after the big guy. Big red-headed woman. Oh, and they'll give you all sorts of missions, and you'll get side things as well. Like one dwarf called Karn. He's like, gonna find me my fucking dinner plate, mate, because if I don't have my dinner plate, I can't use my microwave and make my fucking... Macintosh's macaroni and cheese or the stovies, right? So fucking get to see me. People say that fucking fish and chips is Scottish cuisine. Tell them to ram it up their arse. No, it's fucking no. That's Italian fried shite. We don't make fucking crap like that. Scottish cuisine is like haggis, neeps, and totties. Stovies and that. Fuck your fried fish. Anyway, I just thought I'd get that off my chest. Death doesn't eat any food because, well, he's already dead, isn't he? He's the Reaper! He's tiny, but he's tiny and skinny and nimble like a rogue. But he'll batter fuck out you. So, aye. Anyway, what was I talking about? One of the real standout things for me in this game is the soundtrack. Oh, it's fucking brilliant, man! I highly recommend you just turn all the effects off and all the voice work and all of and just just cut about each landscape and just listen to this soundtrack for a bit. It's, it's great, it's lovely and calm and it just the it instills that sort of otherworldly longing that I want to escape the earth type feeling, you know. I get every other fucking second in this planet. But aye, soundtrack, fucking top notch. Top fucking notch! Now we'll get into the boss battles and there's and there's quite a few of them, there's even secret ones you can ask them about and they'll tell you, like, 
But why need you go kill all these wallopers? And you're like, ah, you didn't need a builder. Right, that's, that's cool. You also get money in this game. You don't use souls to buy anything. It's now cashola. Gold, specifically. So break everything, all your urns and boxes. Everything you can see, smash fuck it because you'll get money. Loads of it. I think I've got like a hundred thousand. See, but this is a thing, see the amount of loot you've got. Don't, you can dismantle it, but don't do that right away. You'll eventually get weapons that can absorb other weapons, but you want to save them and basically any weapon that you find or you can buy that's got health leech, so health on attack. You attack them and they heal you as you're attacking them. Save those absorption uh, scythes and whatever hammers uh, for those weapons. Makes the game a hell of a lot easier later on. You just batter fuck at them and heal yourself at the same time. And there's some difficult moments. This game is fucking it's rock hard. It's like it's it's like chewing the Grand Canyon in a burger. Do you know what I mean? It's rock fucking hard. How do you chew a gap? There's rock there, right? Just use your imagination. Like I say, there's more than one world. You'll eventually get to the Tree of Life, and that'll be like that's your your hub for the, the other worlds, like the World of the Dead. And you go to Samael's Castle, and all oh, other sorts of places. You go to Earth for a mission. Basically, things like that. So you've you've got a lot to see and do in this game. It's a lot more open than the last one. Ah, I, I just prefer it in just about every way to the last one. The, the combat's no as simplistic. The the the, the, the I think deaths are far more interesting character than war. War's just a big blundering blunt instrument. Death's a sarky prick. He's like, I'm not fucking doing enemy of your errands. And then you go and do it anyway, you know, that's just what the game like. But uh, I I mean it's just it's a shame it never sold well. I've no idea what the remaster sold, but it doesn't even run that well even on the Xbox Series X that I'm playing it on. It's like, uh, you need to patch this to up this fucking frame rate and get rid of these wee jittery bits. Because they shouldn't really be happening, but they are happening. And there's only so much a solid state hard drive can do, sure it'll pump up the fucking uh, loading speeds and all that shit, but it doesn't fix all the problems and it won't fix all the problems. Of which there are a few. There's also DLC, you'll get the the Dithinubudubudubud edition. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about them because I can't really be fucked. Maybe in a future video, maybe sometime down the road, I will look at the DLC for Darksiders 2. But as with most things in life, I promise nothing because I just don't, right? Okay, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's opened your eyes to the Darksiders uh, series a bit more, showing you how different this one actually is. It appears to be the same, but there are quite a bit of differences underneath the surface. A lot of the surface changes I do like, and a lot of the deeper changes I really like. And this will uh, make us move on to Darksiders 3, which is a bit of a strange game. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into that in the next video, so adios. <laughs>
You are the machine that... Are we to waste our time on ceremony, or are we to fight? Step forward and recognize, Hoffman. You are the most impatient of your kin. The least predictable, dancing on the edge of your own reality. Your brothers understand the undertaking set before them. But do you? Still talking! Shall I have Death fetch us some tea, or can we get on with it? Fury, your role in this story is yet to be written. I wonder, will you light the flame of creation anew, or stomp out the embers for good? So here's a sequel I never actually thought we would get. Darksiders Part 3, Dark Souls Edition. <laughs> Dark Souls! 99 Souls! Yes, I like Pirates of the Caribbean movies, get it up you. Uh, and uh, th this really is just a reskin Dark Souls with Darksiders Mythos thrust up its fucking arse cheeks. And here, uh, this is where I, I might actually do a separate video about this, but the Trend chasing really pisses me off. Now things like that normally wouldn't bother my bum cheeks, but I'm seeing it a lot. And a lot of these new games, these fantasy style games that I want to play, I'm just sort of I'm skipping over them because every time I see a new one, it's like, well, that's just fucking Dark Souls again, isn't it? Like take this game, take a lot of games, even Assassin's Creed do this. They've moved the action button for X to swing your weapon. To RB and uh, RT? What the fuck is that? You can change it back to classic, but it just doesn't change the feel of combat, it just moves the fucking action button back to X. Ooh. And like I say, loads of games are guilty of this. God of War. The, all the new fucking Assassin's Creed games do it. Then you've got games like Hellpoint, Mortal Shell. Some other pish that I can't remember. It's like Dark Souls Begins and Undoctrine and, and, and something that begins with an un. Right, an un. Then you look at Dark Side of Steel again and you're like, right, go. Cool. So it's going to be a Dark Souls clone. Wow, that's just fucking smashing. Every, everything we had that was great about the second game we're going to take out of it. So there's no mere loot. No mere fucking money. We're back to the souls again for currency, but it's not just currency. It's also how you level up your character, so you can grind it. It's and in the same way in Dark Souls, if you die or if you go back to an area you've just been in, everything respawns, and it's just you can grind, 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 grind. Even the items that appear in the ground are like fucking Dark Souls, are like wee wisps of flame. You're like that's just ripped for Dark Souls. Then you've got the vulgar rim spots which just act like your fucking bonfires, like Dark Souls. Oh, another one that's like Dark Souls is Jedi Fallen Order, but at least that's an original franchise. This is three games deep into a fucking franchise, okay? Don't change everything three games deep, you pricks. Especially what you had before was far fucking better. In my humble opinion, up your ass. But it's my opinion and I think I'm right. And if I think I'm right, that means I think you're wrong if you have an opposing opinion, right, you prick. All joking aside, though, I do find the changes, you know, fucking a bit mind-boggling and a bit annoying. It hasn't stopped me loving the game. Well, maybe not loving the game, but I do really enjoy it, so take that for what you will. But I thought I would open your eyes and let you know what's actually changed and how I think that change is completely fucking needless. And the way that I know that as well is that I'm not the only person that's complained about such things. I don't quite go as far as other folks saying that the game's terrible because it's far from terrible. It's just it feels like Darksiders 2 is a step forward and 3 is definitely a step back in many many ways. The levels aren't as open but the graphics are gorgeous, you know what I mean? So, and the locales are nice and you're, we're back on earth again. It feels a lot more like the first game again. And just about every way apart from the Dark Souls shite. It's not every game needs to be extremely difficult to the point of utter fucking frustration where I don't want to play it anymore. This game is very hard, it's very very difficult, I, I'm playing this on story mode. You know, the mode that's supposed to just basically ferry, ferry you, ferry you from one end of the game to the next without too much fuss. I've died a number of times and this is the easiest fucking mode there is. 
Look, I'm getting old and I'm a grumpy bastard, right? I've also got a really sore neck. I think it's a trapped nerve, so this might be boiling into my anger a wee bit here, but not every game needs to be a fucking endurance test, okay? Alright, pricks! And yes, by that metric, not every game needs to be a fucking walk in the park either. How about a wee bit? How about something called Fair Challenge, eh? How about that? What, what, is there something wrong with that or something? No, I Do you not like it? Does everything have to be super hard? See, you fucking souls bone people. I pity. It mustn't have difficulty options and it invalidates the game. It invalidates my experience. And it, the game would have to be redesigned. So what you're basically telling me that Dark Souls games are just fucking really poorly designed then? So if they weren't hard, they wouldn't be worth playing? That's a mark of a shite game, by the way. And I've played a lot of Souls-like games. That is the mark of a shiter. Okay? But I do think Dark Siders 3 is worth plowing into. Sometimes it's nice just to ruffle feathers, you know what I mean? I don't think anybody will be watching this video right enough, because nobody does. I mean, I think I get very, very unlucky with my, my algorithm, but I swear a lot, so... Swearing is just a fucking crux here. Anyway, so you go Fury, and we're, we're finally five minutes into the video and we're actually going to talk about the fucking game. You go Fury and you've been tasked by the Child Council to find and destroy the seven deadly sins because they've escaped and all this... All the stramash, you know, fucking, it's a, it's a terrible time for Earth. I mean, humans are extinct, no bad thing if you ask me. Fucking heaven and hell are at each other's throats. I thought that was like every other day anyway, apart from Sunday. They all got a wee lion on a Sunday. The child council, like a bunch of stupid fucking faces carved out of rock. They must be really grumpy, they can't even move. And then you've got the four horsemen of the apocalypse that betrayed their ain kind for some reason. Now it said in the intro that the Nephilim were unstoppable and their own kind destroyed them. It doesn't sound unstoppable to me, that sounds quite stoppable. Ah yes, they're an unstoppable force, so where are they? They're all dead. Okay, that... what? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking roaster. And the first one you'll face off against is Envy, and then you'll get gluttony and cannabis arseness and smelly bastardness. Is that a fucking deadly set? Fucking should be. Cunts that don't wash then go out in public. Should be shot down with a fucking fire hose or something and then scrubbed clean. Smelly. Fuckers, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm not winning any fans today. Look, if you're fully able-bodied and you can be asking out the house, please just put on a bit of deodorant at the very least. Think of everybody else around you. I don't want to smell ten-week-old piss stains, okay? Good. And Fury, uh, we'll talk about the game again, Fury's weapon of choice is a whip. <laughs> so very, very saucy. And even, this game feels even more like a Castlevania game because now I've got a fucking whip. You do get other weapons, but you'll get other forms as well. They're called hollows, and I have two at the minute. I've got a fire one and an electricity one. The electricity one um, lets me hover, and it gives me an electric staff. And the fire one lets me walk through puddles of lava, and such like. And it gives me fire weapons that set things on well fire. There's also a witch mode if you manage to do a perfect dodge like in Bayonetta and it slows down time and you'll get like a power move. Very handy and very very good to pull it off, I highly recommend this. She doesn't have a block, it's just dodging and she'll do cartwheels in the air and things like that. It's very 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 smart looking. And um, yeah, they just steal things for every game in this one, don't they? Dark Souls! Bayonetta! What else? Fucking Darksiders! Uh, <laughs> I think the budget for this game is smaller, that's why it's not as big as 2, but <laughs> I just want another game with 2. I'd, li I'd like Darksiders 4, technically 5, to be like a big fucking huge massive honky donky open world and you get to select which horseman you go. Do you want to go war? Do you want to go death? Do you want to go strife or fury? I want to go fucking death actually, but I'd like... like have specific moments you need each one for, then they could maybe sell figurines and cost you another arm and a leg. Pricks. Stop giving them ideas, fanny boys. The toys to life genre died years ago. Let's fucking leave it there along with Guitar Fucking Hero. And one day I hope to see Call of Duty in that pile as well. But I, I'd like the fourth, fifth game to be bigger and like, you know, get a choice of characters. And loot. And lots of progression, and lots of fucking death and destruction, and yes, and uh, on lots of different planes, maybe even have secret characters you can go like the the makers and that, and 
and fucking like make things, build bases and fucking. I, 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 I'm gonna stop. Building bases is a fucking slippery slope. We don't want this game turning into fucking Fallout 4 or Fallout 76. No, come on. Aye, stop it. Stop it now. Tower defence would be nice though. Something like that. Just something. Just think. Ideas. Throw the kitchen sink into it, please. But just bring us the fucking game so we can finish this off. And I'd like a game where all horsemen are in the one. Fucking title. I think they are all in three, but not till the end. I've seen pictures, right? Fuck you. Yes, I, I like the locations in the game. You've, you've just... It's just, they're just really nice. They're really bloody nice. Okay, they're, they're smashing. The characters are fucking insane looking as well. I love the designs in all of them. Brilliant. Just... Aye, it's a stellar standout. It's very creepy looking. Some of them are really daft looking with big fucking things in their back. I don't even know who the fuck that's supposed to be. Kind of reminds me of fucking yeah, Transformers movie. Darker than... No, darker than moon. The fucking other... Revenge of the Fallen, see the guy that is the the big plane? That for some reason just reminds me of him. It's weird. Stop talking, Craigs, and go on with the show, will you? I okay! Happy Halloween, everybody. Up your ass. Aye, so to level up in this game, you need to go to Vulgrim and Gear Souls, and for those amounts of souls, however thousands it'll be, you will get upgrade points. You don't do that by just playing the game like any normal game. You have to buy your upgrade points, so if you can afford it, you can upgrade fucking infinitely and you'll have three sections to upgrade you will have your health your attack damage and your arcane which is your magic and then you can take little bits of metal to one of the fucking makers time to meet your maker that's pathetic and they'll upgrade your weapons and your amulets and all sorts of things and aye it's a good time it's, it's a good game I, I really liked it I just think it's an inferior title to its predecessors more so the second one, I think it's more on par with the first. In fact, I think I like it a little bit more than the first, because the first game's combat's a little too simplistic for my teeth. And I prefer the combat in this one, even if it is Dark Fucking Souls. Okay then, well that's me had my say on this beast. Um, buy it if you like, you'll pay buttons for it. If you don't like it, don't buy it. I don't care, don't come crying to me if you don't like it though. <laughs> I'm all kidding on, tell me everything you think. I want all your opinions, good, bad ugly, just don't moan that Fury's a woman because she's always been female in the Dark Sider series, okay? And seen as they are. Oh, but in the Bible, the horses are apocalypse. Bible's no real, it's a piece of fucking fiction, okay? Horsemen the apocalypse don't actually exist. Okay, they don't actually exist, so don't hit me with that shit either, alright? Right, I'll see you on the next one. Bye. <sighs> Music to my ears. Feel the burn of the Dismembering angels. We all need a hobby. I hope you left something for me. I'll try not to enjoy this too much. Find a troll, witch. Oh, that is unfortunate. Rampage! Your master summons you! Run!
We were set up. War. The others. There are greater forces at work here. Watcher. Help. Mistress! Strife! You know who I am? Yeah. I met your sister once. She was a lot bigger than you. <laughs> but not as pretty. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want, little horse man? <clears throat> Malgros the Defiler. For conspiring with Lucifer committing countless crimes against all of creation, and by order of the Council, I hereby sentence you to death. Who? <laughs> you come into my place alone, threaten me, and think you're just walking out of here. It does sound funny, hearing you say it. I'm gonna count to three. If you're still standing here, I'm gonna defile your corpse in ways you can't possibly imagine. Feed what's left to my boys. Horse meat's their favorite. One! Two, three! Sorry. We're in a hurry. Oh, and, uh, I'm not alone. Here's that last of fucking Joby. You both nick up the sound of my sleep. And welcome to another Halloween review of mine. It is Darksiders DELETERS! And upon watching that intro for this game, I have come to the conclusion that Strife is just Deadpool in a funny suit of armour with two slightly bigger guns. That's what I'm getting anyway. And you, you can control this twat throughout the game along with war. And you can switch between the two if you're playing it single player. Or you can have a friend and play it split screen co-op. Exciting. Or if you don't want to do any of that, you can just, you know, no play the game. That's always an option. See before we really get battled into this review, this game's got a smashing soundtrack like its predecessors. So we'll let you have a wee listen before we get, you know, stuck in fully.
Right, I'm going to be terribly fucking honest here. I haven't got a slightest clue what the story of this shite is. All I know is that Warren Strife gets sent on a mission to go talk to Samael, the fucking demon, again. And he pure fucking is under attack by some pricks. There you go. Game over. Jobby in the pitch. I do tend to say Jobby a lot, so if you don't like it... Fuck off. Here the front door, don't let it punch your kidneys, no, you, no, you fan down it, yeah. Anyway, uh, aye, so... This is Diablo, basically. Diablo with a Dark Siders skin. And the funny thing is, is this plays exactly like another Dark Siders game, only with a Diablo type fucking isometric feel. And sometimes that camera can be zoomed out maybe a little bit too much. The camera's no perfect, it can get stuck on things. You get a really awful silhouette thing when you go behind something or under a fucking bridge or. You know, in a donut or something like that, you know what I mean? So it really is just your standard Dark Siders fare. You press L and B and RB to bring up your horse, you run about in the horse. You can shoot things with guns. So it turns it into a wee bit of a twin stick shooter at times. You'll get different ammo types for your guns. You can have charge attacks for your guns. You've got all your finishers. They're different, obviously, but they're all there. You can punt people off of fucking high heights, if you like, which is actually really fun. Then you go war and it's just kind of like, ah, it's... It's just Darksiders only with an isometric view. Nice big boss battles, Tay. Very addictive gameplay. Really like to have no real cripes with it. Cripes? Or is that creps? It's gripes, you fanny. This actually would be smashing to play on a Switch. If the camera was zoomed in a bit more. It does sometimes zoom in, but most of the time it's... What the fuck am I looking at here? And you get lost a wee bit in the fairy and... You can get hit. There's a it's Dark Siders, mate. There's really nothing more to say about it. It's Dark Siders. Alright, smashing. I think it's my second favourite of all of them. Just coming in uh, below number two. Number one and number three. So three's actually my least like. It's probably the best looking of all of them, but it's my least favourite in terms of gameplay. And this is my second favourite in terms of gameplay. So, I. Take that for what you will. The graphics are actually quite nice in this one, I don't think they're terrible. And you've got wee uh, secondary objectives on your map, you can bring up your map and have a really hard time reading it. It's not the best map in the world, it's not the worst either, but sometimes I have a wee bit of trouble telling where the fuck I am in the bastard and thing. And that's probably just me being a twat. Alright, so to round this out, and I'm going to be rounding this out now because it's short and I've got nothing else to say. Kind of, kind of like my stature, short. Shut your face. Oh, then Aye, there's, there's artifacts to find and on. They'll, they'll, they'll be dropped by enemies. I can't really tell what the enemies are because like the, the, the fucking camera's so fucking zoomed out. Anyway, um, so I this this will wrap this up. Won't you piss, man? I'm getting sick of making these fucking videos. I tell you what, I maybe take a wee break. Then again, maybe no. We'll see. See how I feel. And right now, I feel a bit like totally, like deep fried battered jobby, in fucking some shitey battle. Like, the, like know the good batter when you you finish battering something and it's crispy. It's when you finish battering it and the batter is soggy, soggy. Like Grandpa Jack is just taking a big wallop and pish. Uh, kind of like McDonald's fries. They're a bit soggy. No matter when you get them, they could be as fresh as fuck out that fryer. And they're soggy. They're soggy. Fuck off, soggy. Do not mourn. Do not doubt. Your actions in Eden were tragic, but necessary. 
Eden was intended for humanity, not the Nephilim. It was a great victory for the balance. For you, Horseman. Victory? Where are death and fury? It matters not. Your purpose lies elsewhere. Lucifer, lord of all hells, yet plots humanity's downfall. Weak though they may seem, these fledgling creatures are integral to the balance. We believe the demon Samael, lord of Blackstone Keep, conspires with Lucifer. Seek out Samael. Unravel this plot. Serve the balance. Show them the price of defying the Council. <laughs>